Hi friends, it's good to be with you. Hey, spring is coming. Uh, I recorded a little earlier in the week, but if you're watching this Wednesday night, it's supposed to be 50, the snow's melting. We're getting more daylight. This is an exciting time of the year for me. I hope that you're enjoying it. Just wanna remind you of a few announcements. The Bible reading plan, love to have you continue with that. I think it really has been a blessing for several people in our church. Uh, this next week, we'll be reading Galatians 3 through 6, 1 Corinthians 1 through 2, and Psalm 28 through 33. Also want to remind everybody that we are having church on Sundays, two services, 9.15 and 10.45 a.m., and it's been great to see people. And uh, some of you are not comfortable or ready yet to come back to an in-person service, and we love you and miss you. And I just want to encourage you to, to be a part of worship through our live streams at 1045 a.m. on YouTube and also on Facebook. Friends, we're having a prayer meeting this Saturday at 930. We're going to pray about some important things. We're going to receive Holy Communion. I'd love to have you come and be a part of that. Um, we're also going to stream it. And so um, whether you're watching it from home or here with us, I would just ask you to participate, not just listen but let's pray together. Even if you're praying silently, I just want us to really gather and pray together about some important things. And then finally, tithes and offerings. Uh, thank you for all your generosity. You can give through the website. Some have mailed checks. We also want to mention a special offering, our debt reduction offering. This is the end of our fiscal year as we approach the end of February. And uh, through your generosity and God providing for the church, all of the bills are paid. We've been able to support all of our Nazarene missions and the, the other Nazarene funds that, that we support. And so we're just excited to be able to take the last week of income and put all of it toward the mortgage debt and, uh, and hope that we can take a chunk out of the, the mortgage debt. And so if you'd like to be a part of that offering, you can give online and, or, or through a check and just uh, put debt reduction. You can choose that fund online or, or write that on a check in the memo. Uh, but just put it toward debt reduction. And uh, our, our plan is to take all of our income this final week and, and put it toward the mortgage. Church, it's good to be with you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Kurt's going to lead us in a worship song. Let's open our hearts and praise God with Kurt today. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Where let's uh, prepare our hearts for worship. Father, we've come to lift up your name to glorify you. Lord, we just ask that you would be with us as we praise and as we worship. Lord, you are so worthy of it. So, Lord, we just raise up our lives, raise up our hearts to you. And may you be glorified in this time where we spend time in your word and spend time together. Amen. Your love is devoted. Like a ring of solid gold Like a vow that is tested Like a covenant of old Your love is enduring Through the winter rain And beyond the horizon With mercy for today Faithful you have been Faithful you will be Pledge yourself to me, and it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on
And it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. You will be praised. Be praised with angels and saints. We sing, Worthy are you, Lord. You will be praised. You will be praised with angels and saints. We sing, Worthy are you, Lord. You will be praised. You will be praised with angels and saints. Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Faithful you have been, faithful you will be. Pledge yourself to me, and it's why I sing yes. It's why I sing yes. You're why I will sing now. Hi, friends. Thank you for joining me this evening. Hey, the teaching is from the, the last few chapters of, of the book of Acts, and that's where our reading was this past week. And the title of the message is, Are You Out of Your Mind? Are You Out of Your Mind? And so it's interesting. We see that the Apostle Paul is on trial. And to an outsider, they might say to Paul, Are you out of your mind? Because he was defending himself. He was falsely accused, unjustly accused imprisoned, standing, trial. And, and so he did defend himself to some extent, but it seemed like his priority was, was more about uh, sharing the good news about Jesus, sharing the gospel message, trying to help people find Jesus, come to faith in Jesus. That was more important to him than his own suffering or imprisonment. Um, and so we see in Acts chapter 24, he's standing before Governor Felix, standing trial before him. And again, defends himself to some extent, but it seems that his desire is, is to proclaim the message of Jesus. And he even has some private meetings with Governor Felix and Governor Felix's wife. And the scripture in chapter 24 says he told them about faith in Christ. And it says that he told them about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come. He was trying to win Governor Felix for Jesus. And, and Governor Felix's wife Rather than defending himself and pleading and saying, I'm innocent, don't, don't keep me captive here. He's, he's meeting with them even privately, trying to win them for Jesus. Somebody might say to Paul, are you out of your mind? Well, Governor Felix kept him in prison there for a few years, and then um, he was replaced or succeeded by Governor Festus, and, and, he, and he, he met with, with Governor Festus, but, but I want to focus in Acts chapter 26. There, there's a trial there where Paul is standing trial not only before Governor Festus, who's the new governor, but also King Agrippa. So now he's standing trial but before a governor and a king. And, uh, and as he's there, he tells them about his former life. He explains to them that he wasn't always a follower of Jesus, but that, that he was a leader in, in the Jewish community. And, and he was... He had a lot of authority. He explains to him that he was, he explains to the governor and the king 
that he was really involved in the persecution of the he wasn't always a christian he used to be a persecutor of christians and, and he was overseeing and approving violence against christians and imprisonment of christians and so he tells them about his former life this is like if you and i were sharing our testimony that we would tell people about the the life that we had before jesus paul is sharing with them um, his his former life and then he shares his testimony about how Jesus came into his life. He talks about uh, as, as, he was, uh, as he was approaching Damascus, that there was this great light from heaven that, that shone down like brighter than the sun. And, and then Paul heard a, a voice. Of course, his name then was Saul, but he heard a voice. The voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Paul said, who are you, sir? The voice says, I am Jesus. The, the, the one that you are persecuting. And so he's telling them about his conversion story. So instead of defending himself, he's telling them about his former life before Jesus. He's telling them about how he met Jesus and how Jesus spoke to him. This is similar to a testimony that you or I could give. And then he explains to them that Jesus called him to go and preach the good news. And so as he's explaining that he was preaching the good news, he is telling uh, Governor Festus and King Agrippa, he is explaining the good news to them. So again, rather than defending him, and he'd been in prison wrongfully for at least a couple years. His life was at stake. Um, but, but his focus is he's trying to tell Governor Festus and King Agrippa his testimony and I believe he wants to win them for Jesus Christ. He wants them to know Jesus. The whole thing's kind of bizarre to the point where somebody might say to Paul, are you out of your mind? What are you doing? Why aren't you pleading for mercy and, de and declaring your innocence? What, what, do you, what are you doing? Are you out of your mind? And so he, he's, 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 trying to share the gospel with them. And, and he, in the middle of this trial, as all of this is happening, he finally gets interrupted by, by Governor Festus. And we see that in verse 24. We're in Acts chapter 26. We see it in verse 24. And it says, at this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defense. You are out of your mind, Paul, he shouted. Your great learning is driving you insane. You are out of your mind, Paul. What are you? T what? I, I think what he must have been thinking and saying is, why aren't you defending yourself? This is a trial. Why are you telling me all of this stuff about Jesus? And so he thought it was strange, and 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 he makes the accusation, "Are you out of your mind?" Or actually says, "You are out of your mind." And uh, and and thought Paul maybe he legitimately thought Paul was insane, but Paul was not insane. It seems insane, but he wasn't insane. He was so passionate that other people could come to know the love of God, the forgiveness of God, that other people could stand before God in judgment someday and, and, and through Jesus be completely accepted um, in, into heaven, into the presence of God. That was a burning desire and a burning passion for him that was more important than his own freedom. And so all of this is happening, and he explains to Governor Festus that he, that he wasn't insane. And then King Agrippa um, places himself in the middle of this discussion, and, and I love this. So we, we're, we're still in Acts chapter 26, now we're in verses 28 and 29. So the king, it says, then Agrippa, that's the King Agrippa, then Agrippa said to Paul, do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? So that seems bizarre to King Agrippa. Like, again, you should be trying to defend yourself. You're standing trial. But to King Agrippa, he's saying, do, do you think that in, in, in just these few moments, you can persuade me to, to, to be a Christian? I would imagine if through all of the trials that, that Governor Festus and King Felix ever sat through, they'd never seen anything like this. And, and then we see Paul's reply. Short time or long, I pray to God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for these chains. <laughs> I love his response. But we see that King Agrippa also thinks he's crazy. You're on trial for your life. 
You just met me today and you think in just these few moments, you're going to convince me to become a Christian. And let me read uh, verse 29 to you again. It really is a, a precious verse. It's, it's dear to my heart. Verse 29, Paul replied, short time or long, I pray to God that not only you, he's saying that to King Agrippa and, and, and Governor Festus, not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for these chains. So more than anything, Paul wanted the governor and the king and anybody else who was in his presence that day during his trial they wanted them, he wanted them to become what he was, and he was a disciple. He was a follower of Jesus. He was a man who loved God, who walked with God. He was a man who had been forgiven of his sins. He was a man that was ready to face a day of judgment and, and to be welcomed into heaven because of the relationship that he had with God and because of the work of Jesus in his life. That's what he wanted. He's saying to them, what's more important to me than my freedom, what's more important to me than anything else is, is that, that all of you, anyone who, who I'm able to talk to, that they might become what I am, a believer, a man who knows God, a man who walks with God. I love this verse because we, we see the heart of Paul so clearly in it. The, the only difference he wants all of them to, to come to know God, to be what he is. The only thing that he doesn't want for them are his chains. And so I'm going to read it again. Short time or long, I pray to God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for these chains. He likely had his hands chained together, bound together. Perhaps even as he said that, I, I want all of you to become what I am, except for these chains. That, that he lifted up his hands and, and showed them the chains. I don't want you to be falsely accused. I don't want you to be imprisoned. I want you to have freedom. But what I want for you more than anything else is to become what I am. People who love God and know God and walk with God. People who receive the forgiveness of God. People who are ready to stand in the presence of God, even on a day of judgment. And, and to be embraced by the Father. To be welcomed in to his heaven. Friends, I hope that, that those verses are encouraging and inspiring to you today. Um, but here, here is my prayer that during this season of our life, a very, very unique time in, in all of our journeys, that during this season of our lives, that we would be aware of people around us who are lost and that our hearts would break for them and we would have this same passion, the same desire in our hearts that we would really want for them to become what we are. That they, they could also be, a, be people who know what it is to receive the forgiveness of their sins and know what it is to know God and walk with God and have fellowship with God and intimacy with God. That that would become a great passion for us. That, that we could even set aside the, the things that are important to us, the way that Paul was ev even able to set aside his own freedom because he had such a passion for the people around him who did not yet know Jesus, that, that we could even set aside some of the things in our life that, that have seemed important, that have seemed so dear, and, and that our hearts would be drawn uh, to, to reach out to people um, to, to share a, a witness, to, to, to share an invitation, to, to be an encouragement, to show people the love and the kindness and the friendship of Jesus, that, that during this year, 2021, when so many people are hurting, so many people are struggling, that, that this could be a great year for us to turn our hearts to those who are lost, to those who need Jesus, that we could have the same inner desire as Paul that when we see the lost people of this world all around us, that our heart's desire is that they could become what we are and they could have and experience what we have and what we experience. Friends, will you pray with me this evening? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come into your presence today. We are grateful for your word. I am grateful today for Paul's example and his heart and Lord, I do pray and ask, and I'm not just praying it for the church family, Lord. I'm praying this for me. Lord, would you do a work in my heart? 
Would you give me a, a greater awareness of people in my life who do not yet know you? Would you send me to them, Lord, from a place of love and kindness, but also with the courage to be a witness, the, the courage to reach out, the courage to invite? And Lord, I pray that same prayer for my brothers and sisters who watch this live stream, that uh, you would just bring a, a strong sense of passion and inspiration to our hearts that may be more now than at any other time in our entire lives, that our heart's desire would be that the people around us who do not yet know Jesus, our desire would be for them to, to be what we are, to, to have what we have, to experience what we experience. Lord, that they could come to a place where they know you and walk with you and receive the forgiveness of their sins. Lord, we love you today. I think of everyone who's watching, everyone in the church, I just pray that you would encourage and strengthen and uh, just ask a blessing upon each individual, upon each family today. I pray that you would bless them and encourage them. Lord, we thank you for your word and we pray that you would just continue to teach us and help us to grow closer to you um, and, and, and speak to us through your word. We're grateful for it. And Lord, I'm thankful for the time that we've had together this evening. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Church family, I hope that you have a wonderful week. And uh, as, as we approach the last Sunday in February, February the 28th coming up, I just want to invite you, if you're ready, to come and worship with us. God bless you, friends. Have a great week.